And see, I know, I know the people in this church. You have a desire to do the things of God. You know, sometimes you get weary, you get tired, you get busy, you get this, you get that. And we can all come up with, I got this. But today, you're going to get it. All right? Today is going to be about getting it. Amen? We're going <clears throat> to articulate our vision in a way that you can get it. And then you're going to get hooked up with it, and you're going to help others get it. Amen? And we're all going to get it together. Praise God. Now, uh, some of the things we're already putting into place as we met with our, as we said, we, we changed some things. We now have Fifth Sunday fellowships with, with Family Day, with department meetings, you know, afterwards, all on the same day, quarterly. <clears throat> these, are, these, are not, these are not something we have to go, oh, we're going to have a department head meeting on this week. Or that. No, it's set, for, it's set for eternity. Janie put on Google Calendar yesterday. If you can go to the website and get the Google Calendar on, on our website, I mean, you know, the... Uh, the recurring things are out there for the whole year. Our fifth Sundays for the whole year are out there. Now, we don't have our, our, all of our meal plans. We do know that on November the 1st, we'll be down East Barbecue. All right. Hallelujah. Or down November the 2nd. Down East Barbecue and fried chicken. Oh, uh -huh. Anybody excited yet? Oh, yeah. Don't wish the whole year away. We got stuff to do before then. Hallelujah. But some of you think, man, can't we just have an extra one in there in between? No. There's a lot of work to that baby. Anyway, he's going to buy the pig, and I'm going to do all the work. Isn't that, isn't that kind of like stone soup? Y'all remember that? And, and we've, introduced, we've introduced Fifth Wednesday ice cream socials. So every, you know, that's on the calendar. Every time we have a Fifth Wednesday, there's going to be an ice cream social after church. Hallelujah. You know, all through the year, which is just like Fifth Sunday, there's four of those a year, there'll be four of those a year. So we have ice cream socials, you know, um, we got our second Wednesday night dinners. We're doing things, and we're establishing things, and we're, and we're trying to become more organized. That was one of the things the Lord had to deal with me about. There's some things he dealt with me about, about people, and about hurts, and so forth. That we, we're right here, we're right here. He dealt with us, and so we've, we've been making adjustments since Christmas and the first of the year, getting some things. That we had our first staff meeting, uh, leadership meeting, I think near the end of, end of February, January, February, right in that time frame. We had, we had one on a Sunday afternoon. Um, and we, what we did is we just took care of some business, and we met with our, everybody, and we, we, we laid this out then to them, and then now we're getting it all in place. <clears throat> and so it, we're introducing it now. And it's not too far into the year. This is only the first Sunday. This is the first Sunday in March. We've got 10 more months to get stuff done. Yeah. Amen? All right. So here, uh, go ahead, Larry, put that up. Our vision, not our vision, our mission. Here's our mission statement. You ready for it? It's real complicated. Faith and Victory Church, mission. We are here so people get it. That's simple, isn't it? Now, you're all, everybody's going to get one of these today. It's a little, little hang tag. Hallelujah. We, we were going to get the ones that are actually really hang tags. They were just so small, you had to have a microscope. So we blew them up. Hallelujah. You know, we, we do everything big. We're kind of like Texans. This is a Texas hang tag. All right? This is so, our mission is here. We are here so people get it. Get what? Get saved, get victory, and get going. Amen? So we have, we, have this, we have this for your house. And so under get saved, we get, get born of the Spirit, the new birth, Jesus, become a Jesus follower, Christian, know God. So you're going to get saved. You're going to get victory. You're going to get filled with the Spirit, full of the Word, live by faith, have an in Christ reality re revelation, and have a good praise and prayer life. You're going to get going. You're going to reach people for Jesus. Make disciples and re reproduce. We're going to build his church. We're going to find and fulfill God's purpose. And we're going to invest our lives in eternal things. And the result of this is going to be an overflowing life with abundant life, joy, peace, hope, and eternal fruit. And I'm going to be sharing on this today, these different things. But you know, we're, going to, we're going to get each one of you these one little, these cute little. Yeah, that is real burlap type twine there, folks. Trust me. As we were stretching them out and cutting them, you could just, it just really stirred up the, 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 uh, the uh, my wife goes, I hate that smell. It reminds me of tobacco. Well, you know, you took tobacco out and put it in burlap sacks and tie them. How many, how many ever worked in tobacco fields? All right, you remember those, all right? Well, that's what it smelled like, those big old burlap sacks and the paper doesn't. Anyway, hallelujah. So it looks cool. It looks really cool. Backside has our church logo on it and um, our new church logo. And, uh, but here we go. The mission is what? We are here. So people, we are here. So people get it. What do they get? Saved. Victory and going. All right? So we're going to get people saved. We're going to get people full of victory, and then they're going to get going. In other words, our lives are not about just getting saved and having victory. It's about doing something with that. Okay? And so it's going to be, it is, I was, uh, 
looking at some stuff that Nathan had to do for, for a paper on Buddhism. And, you know, the karma cycle. You know, you, you live, you die, you get reborn. And what you did in the past, you know, is, is, is what's left over in whatever consciousness doesn't uh, end up in the, the, uh, the, uh, the constant flux of change that does make into the next life, into the next entity that you get born in is a result of what you did in the previous life. And it's, <coughs> you know, the, <coughs> the Buddhist interdependent organization and all that kind of stuff. <coughs> and uh, I'm just thinking, oh, God, is that messed up? You know, you're just kind of going, you know, they say that nothing, everything is in trend, is in a transition, transitional flux. Nothing ever stays the same. But what you did in the past life carries over, you know, and they live in a karma cycle. They live in a cycle where, you know, whatever your karma was gets carried over. And this, this is really simplistic. And uh, you have to work through that. And ultimately what you're what trying to achieve is enlightenment and break the karma cycle and no longer have to go through that cycle again. You become a Buddha or enlightened one. You reach nir nirvana. Well, that's crazy. We want a cycle, though. We want a new birth cycle. We want a growth cycle. And so what we're going to do is, here's what we do. We get saved. How many are here already saved? How many already got some victory? Now we're going to get you going. Because what you're going to do is you're going to reproduce and get people saved. And then they're going to get victory. And then they're going to get going. And then they're going to, along with you, continue to reproduce and get people saved and get them victory and get them going. And then that group is going to join the other two groups who've already gotten saved and victory and going. And they're all going to go get people saved. And then they're going to get victory. And then they're going to get going. This is the cycle we need to enter into. It is a reproduction cycle that starts with getting saved. Yeah. So we're here so people get it. They get saved. They get victory. They get going. So they can have, the, the, and they can ultimately end up with eternal fruit. Hallelujah. So, praise God. Go ahead, if you will, and open up your Bibles. How many want one of these? We're going to give one to everybody. Kids, everybody gets one. All right. Now listen, I do not want to see paper airplanes. <laughs> Got it? You know, your kid can hang it on the dresser. You know, you can put it wherever, but we don't mind. We want the kids, we want them to know they're involved in this too. But we really don't want to come into the church and see them float, flying through the air. You know? <clears throat> I know they're already pre-designed for paper airplane, but <laughs> hallelujah. Just think, you know, kind of thinking ahead. Children will be children. So what older men. Hallelujah. So here's our cycle. Let's say it together. FEC's mission is we are here so people get it. Okay. So we're talking about the spiritual cycle of getting it today. Amen. So all this starts <clears throat> with people coming into the kingdom of God. Look with me, if you will, into the third chapter of the Gospel of John. Now I want to ask you all something. You may be worn out, weary, tired, kind of floundering around the water, wondering what you're going to do in life, kind of tired of everything. It's time to, it's time to shake yourself. It's time to stir yourself up. It's time to hear this thing and, and gain from this today a vision and a purpose for your future and not just live in the, you know, the shoulda, coulda, wouldas. I wish I could be here. I wish I could be there. Can't live where, you know, you're just living defeated. It's time to get up and let's dust ourselves off and go get something done for Jesus. All right, three amens. I said it's time to get ourselves ready to go do something for Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. It all starts here in John 3. And uh, there was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. The same came to Jesus by night and said unto him, Rabbi, we know that thou art a teacher come from God, for no man can do these miracles that thou doest except God be with him. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto you, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. And Nicodemus saith unto him, How can a man be born when he is old? He, can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born? And not, about 99% of the women I know of say, Dear God, I hope not. Hallelujah. Y'all not going to laugh? All right. Jesus said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, except the man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. So water was representing a natural birth. Okay? You know, so Jesus said you'd be born again. In other words, you're going to have a physical birth. When you come into the earth, you have a physical birth. The new birth, the second birth, being born again, is not talking about physical. <clears throat> it's not talking about mental. It's talking about spiritual. Your spirit must be born again. 
You are, you are born into this world under the curse of sin. Satan, according to Jesus in John 8, uh, 8, 44, says you are of your father the devil. And the lust of your father you will fulfill. Marvel not, Jesus says to Nicodemus, that I say unto thee, thou, you must be born again. And um, the wind blows where it listeth. It hears the sound thereof. But you can't tell whence it comes and whether it goes. So is everyone that's born of the Spirit. Nicodemus answered and said to him, How can these things be? And Jesus said, Are you a master or a teacher of Israel and know not these things? Verily, verily, I say unto you, We speak that we know, do know, and testify that which you've seen, and receive not our witness. I have told you earthly things, and you believe not. How shall you believe if I tell you heavenly things? No man that hath ascended up to heaven, and he that cometh down from heaven, even the Son of Man, I'm sorry, and no man hath ascended up to heaven, but he that came down from heaven, even the Son of Man which is in heaven. And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have ever, eternal or everlasting life. For God so loved the world, that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. God sent not the Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. In other words, Jesus did not come to send them all to hell. He came to offer the plan of redemption to, to deliver them. That does not mean that there's not a, an end judgment. That doesn't mean there's not things that are going to happen in the end. It means his purpose was to provide a means where they didn't have to go to hell. Okay? Glory to God. And so here we have being born of the Spirit and experiencing the new birth. Though that, is the first, that is the entrance into all this. See, we're here so people get, get it. They get saved. They come into the kingdom of God. We have to understand that our primary mission as believers is not to tell everybody what we know about healing, what we know about, you know, uh, in him realities. Unbelievers need to know they can get saved. You know, that they can have a Cadillac. They don't need to know they can have a Cadillac. They know how to get a Cadillac. If they want a Cadillac, they go steal it if they want it bad enough. You don't go teach prosperity to unbelievers. You teach them, get saved. You need Jesus. You need to come into the kingdom of God. Amen? Our primary mission as believers is to get folks saved. Now, in discipling them, all the other stuff comes. You know, Paul got to the church at Ephesus. Remember that? We read that the other day. In, in, in Acts, he said he came to the upper coast of Ephesus and found certain disciples. Those are disciples of Apollos. And said, have you received the Holy Ghost since you believed? They said, we well, ain't even heard the Holy Ghost. See, he knew they were already saved, so he wanted to get them to the next level of victory. Amen? So, but our, our mission, we got to get them saved first. We can fill a church with unsaved people in this city. We can, we can fill a church over four times with unsaved people in the city and not even touch the city. I mean, not even have an impact on the city as a whole. Are y'all here? Because there's, Greensboro proper is 200,000 people. Winston, or 210 now. Winston's about 195. High Point's about 75 to 80. In a 30-mile radius of Greensboro itself is 1.7 million people. And those, are, those figures are a little old. They could be higher by now. They, they would be higher. They wouldn't be less. We've grown. So let's, look, let's just say realistically, we're in the neighborhood in a 30-mile radius of 2 million people that we need to touch. And we can't do it all by ourselves. We've got to do our part. We, we have got to take upon ourselves the mission of being witnesses of Jesus, for Jesus Christ and getting people saved. They need to hear the gospel message. They need to be told that God loves them, that God, Jesus came to die for them and redeem them, was raised from the dead for their justification, and if they'll believe on him, they can come into the kingdom and be saved. Amen. Well, they won't receive, you know, what if somebody doesn't receive my testimony? There's 1,999,999 people left to go talk to. Are you here? If one person rejects it, you still got a, 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 a bucket load of people to go get to. We have got to get busy about the kingdom of God. And I'm not, that's it, this, isn't, this is what we are about. We've got to be sharing Jesus. We've got to be sharing it with people. We've got to be sharing his love with people. We've got to be witnessing that God loves them, that, God, that Jesus died for them, that, they, that, they, that they're, they're lost with their sin. They need God. Well, they, they cussed me out. Well, there's 1,999,998 people left to go talk to. Are you here? One rejects you, one cusses you. Okay. But don't worry about that. You know, in the Bible, you know, he sent the disciples, said, go into the city. If they reject what you say, walk out there and shake the dust of the feet off of your feet as a testimony against them. But he didn't tell them to quit. Go on to something else. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. 
Don't quit. Don't quit serving God. Don't quit doing what God said for us to do. Let's keep going. And we have to shake our dust off our feet in some places. Just shake it off and keep going. Don't get disheartened. Amen. What if a hundred people reject me? Do I have to do this math every time? 1,999,000. Uh, 898 left. Did I get that right? All right, praise the Lord. Look over in Luke chapter 9. Matthew, Mark, Luke. Luke chapter 9. Luke, Luke, I. Am. Anyway. It really helps if I'm in Luke chapter 9 <coughs> and not Luke chapter 10. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> Jesus said in Luke 9, 23, he said to them, if any man will come after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross daily, and follow me. For whosoever will save his life shall lose it. Whosoever will lose his life for my sake, the same shall save it. Hallelujah. Jesus is telling us we've got to go to people. They're going to have to deny themselves. They're going to deny the world. They're going to have to come and follow him. He's looking for true disciples. He's looking for men and women who will, who will, who will accept him. Remember, Hebrews eleven six 6 says this, that without faith it's impossible uh, to please him. For they that come to God must, everybody say must, believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. See, we've been, we've been trying to do things where we, we try to convince people they need Jesus instead of preaching the gospel and letting the Holy Ghost convict and convince them. Amen? You can't, you can't argue people into the kingdom. You can't argue them. <clears throat> Paul, Paul was one of the most persuasive men of his day. And King Agrippa looked at him and said, Almost thou persuadest me to be a Christian. He said, I wish it wasn't just almost. I wish it was all together. You know, but, but, you know, the fact of the matter is, you can, you know... Almost ain't good enough. The Bible didn't say that Abraham was almost persuaded. It said he was fully persuaded that what God promised he was able to do. See, we've got to go preach the gospel and let, let the Holy Spirit deal with people so that by the power of the Holy Ghost they get saved. But we've got to be out there sharing the gospel. It's our job to share it. It's his job to, to, to deal with them. Amen? There's two million people in this area we've got to get to. Are you here? And, the, and, the world's, and, and even in America, they're becoming more and more pluralistic, atheistic, anti-Christ, anti-Christian as, as, as much as anything, as they can be. And, you, and, and we're facing a persecution level that we've never seen before in this nation. And, 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 and right now it's a subversive persecution or a persecution or a, a um, sublimial persecution, but it's coming out more and more openly. And you're going to have to man up, cowboy up, cowgirl up, and get, get, get your Holy Ghost riding pants on, and let's go take it to the, to take it to the people. Because we're here to get people what? We're here so people get it. And the first thing they got to get is saved. Our mission is we are here so people get it. And our first mission under getting it is they need to get saved. Hallelujah. And then once they get saved, we got to make them, we got to make disciples out of these people. Amen. We don't need converts. You know, the Bible doesn't even use that word. We don't get converts. You know, how many converts did you have? You now, Jesus said, did not say go into all the world and make converts out of people. He said, make disciples out of people. Are you here? And there's a big difference. Are you here? There's a big difference between getting converted and, and becoming a disciple. Disciple means a disciplined one, one who begins to study and act and, and emulate the practices of what they're being taught, not just converted. You know, I'm a Christian because I joined the church, and now I'm a Christian. You know, no, he wants us to make disciples out of people. He wants to train them. He wants them to become versed in the Word of God. He wants them to act like Jesus. Oh, all right, that wouldn't be. Not find ways that not act like Jesus and still go to heaven. He's not in, God's not into you trying to figure out how to, how to, how to circumvent. Nathan was talking this morning about, you know, how, how there's, uh, in the world there's so many people who are in the system are always trying to figure out how much they can get, not do and still make it. What's the least amount I can do and keep my job? What's the least amount I can do and pass my grade? What's the, we're, we're all, the world mindset now is what's the least I can do and still get all the rewards? 
Well, see, that'll creep into the church. What's the least I have to act like God and still get to go to heaven and still do some of the things I want to do in the process? Now, we got, we, we, when you get born again, you should want to be just as much like Jesus as you can possibly be like Jesus. And, you know, the Word of God says this, be imitators of God as dear children. Yeah. We're to imitate God. We're to act like God. In other words, we're to think, act, respond, do things like God would do them. Well, that went over really even bigger than some of the things I said earlier. <laughs> Hallelujah. All right. Acts eleven twenty six. 26, it said when they had, um, actually says in Barnabas, verse 25, uh, then departed Barnabas to Tarsus for to seek Saul, and when he had found him, he brought him into Antioch. Now remember, if, you, if we, as we're doing our life and teachers of Paul, his home base became Antioch. And that's where Paul ministered out of, and that's where he traveled out of, was out of the church, out of Antioch. Because in Acts 13, uh, the Bible you know, says, they minister, as they fast, as they, um, Minister to the Lord and fast of the Holy Ghost says, separate unto me Barnabas and Saul for the work whereunto I've called them. And they prayed some more and fasted and they laid hands on them and sent them out. That was a church Paul launched his missionary journeys from was a church at Antioch. Okay. Well, they find him in Antioch and it came to pass that a whole year they assembled themselves with the church and taught much peoples. And the disciples were called Christians first in Antioch. Let me say something here. You know, becoming a Jesus follower, becoming a Christian is not that you get saved and you call yourself a Christian. Christ, the word Christian means Christ-like. And they did not call themselves Christians. Others called them Christians. Because the message they preached, they lived. They so lived like the one they preached a lot about, they said, you're Christ-like, you're Christians. See, we need to be disciples whose lives become a testimony of that we're Christians. Instead of us saying, we belong to such and such church, so I'm a Christian. The life became. You know, Paul wrote one place and said, there were living epistles known and read of all men, glory to God. And so we want to train people up in, 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 so in, in that getting saved in that developmental process so that their life becomes known and read of all men. The Christian that they are is that, is that people recognize that they're Christians because of how they live. It is a representation of the one they serve. You ought to be, you know, listen, getting saved, sozo. Don't mean just not going to hell. There's a transformation of your life. The way, you know, the way you think should change. The way you live should change. The way you do should change. Amen? So we're here. So people, that's cute. So people... We are what? Why? What do they get? Saved. Saved. All right. Hallelujah. Then look at Ephesians chapter 1, verse 17. Born of the Spirit, the new birth, becoming a Jesus follower, a Christian. Can I say this? We should not present the idea that coming into the kingdom of God, becoming a Christian, me, is, is about church social events. Now listen, we provide things to build a community. But that is not what we're about. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Those things are, are there to minister to you, to minister to an arena of your life. But that's not, that's not what we're using to hook people in. Yeah. Paul said this. He said, I came not unto you with enticing words of man's wisdom, but in demonstration of the spirit and of power. And there was a reason. He said this, he went on to say this, so that your faith would not stand in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. You see, this is why I have a, you know, I don't have any problem with churches having rock climbing walls, having indoor swimming pools, having cool, neat programs. But if that is what you're using to hook people, then what's happening? I always say this, what you win them with is what you're going to keep them with. That's exactly what Paul said. I came not with enticing words of man's wisdom, but in demonstration of the spirit and the power. So your faith wouldn't stand in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. Why? Because I'm going to tell you something. A rock climbing wall won't help you in the hour of crisis. And let me say this. I'm going to be honest with you. We have enough money and we got a church big enough. I ain't got no problem putting one in. Amen. I'll be with him. <laughs> put in a racquetball court. I mean, you know, I, you know, pastor be out there all the time like Pastor Hagen. You know, put my knee braces on, my goggles on. We're out there. Praise God. And I'll have on my old short, short gym shorts. Oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> Hallelujah. I'm thinking bring it back, bring it back. I can't stand these old floppy shorts. 
My, my, my. I want some that I know that's still up when I got them on. <laughs> that one, you don't know if they've fallen down or not. They're so baggy. I mean, you could be, show, you could be showing people your boxers or your tidy whities or whatever and not even know it. Lord have mercy. They're just going to meddling. Hallelujah. No, I, I think it's cool to have all kinds of cool stuff. But I don't think it's cool to use that to win people. See, it's got to be the wisdom, it's got to be the power of God, because that's what people need. They need a supernatural transformation. We can minister to the carnal man or the natural man. We can minister to the natural man and, and the providing activities and stuff for them once they're in, but we, we, we got to win them with something more powerful than that. We got to win them with the gospel. We got to win them with the power of God. And they got to have a transformation. And then when they bring their families into the family life, send a glory to God. <clears throat> I'll be over there with them. Amen. We'll all have a good time together. We'll play tug of rope, tag tug of war with the rope, you know? Put all the little guys on me at one side, me on the other, and I'll steal me. All right, anyway. You put all the, I had put the nursery workers, the nursery kids over there, but I'll still win. All right. Ephesians chapter 1. See, and being part of it, getting saved, they say, come to know God. We want people to know God. We don't want them to know about God. We want them to know God. Amen. Ephesians 1, 17 says that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. God wants you to come to know him. He doesn't want you to just be born of him. He wants you to know him. Amen. And he wants you to come into an intimacy with him, a knowledge of him, how he thinks, how he acts, how he does. This is the saving process. What's in that saving process? This is the saving of the soul. It's getting restored with the Word of God. It's coming in line to think like God thinks, to think in line with the Word of God, to think the way God would do things. Amen. Next, we move over to getting victory. You understand some of these things overlap, but we're, we're just, we're just categorizing them here today just to kind of help us. If you're going to have victory, you're going to need to be filled with the Holy Ghost. I say if you're going to have victory in life, you're going to need to be filled with the Holy Ghost. You need the baptism of the Holy Ghost. You need to pray in tongues. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> Listen to me. Go over with me, if, if you will. I'm, this is not my notes, but let's go on over to the book of Acts. Let's go to chapter 5, I believe it is. Let's go to chapter 8, <laughs> verse 5. <laughs> there you go. I was getting ready to go to chapter 5, verse 8. I get those mixed up all the time. Chapter 8, verse 5. It says, And Philip went down to Samaria and preached Christ, I mean, and preached Christ unto them. Now, what did he preach? What's he doing? What's he doing? He's getting them. All right. And the people with one accord gave heed unto those things which Philip spake, hearing and seeing the miracles which he did. Now, let me say something. Notice that the thing that brought people was the power of God. Nothing else. <coughs> <clears throat> I'm not here to slam anything, but if, you, you know, if you're building your church on cuteness, that's what you've got, a cute church. We have to have a church. Not just faith and victory church. All churches need to be doing this. We need to build our church like Philip went down to Samaria and preached Christ. The people gave heed to him, seeing and hearing the miracles which he did. It is the power of a living God in demonstration and manifestation that this world needs. We don't need a religious principle. We don't need a religious dogma. They need to have an encounter with a supernatural God who has the power to deliver them from all of their oppressions. Glory to God. And that's what humanity is looking for. They're looking for it in New Age. They're looking for it in Weirdo. They're looking for it in the Jedi religion in Australia. Did you not know that in Australia, they have the temple of the Jedi Knights? Are you kidding me? It's a Star Wars movie. And people run around, the force is with me. They're probably trying to figure out how to make a lightsaber. Casco, that would be pretty awesome, though. Yeah, it would be pretty awesome. We'll just take a whole plane of Christians, and we'll all go down there and do the temple and become Jedi Knights. People, looking for, people are looking for answers. They're looking for answers in the world. They're looking for answers in the flesh. They're looking for answers in alcohol. They're looking for it in drugs. Did you know that heroin is making a comeback? One of the most destructive drugs ever. If you've ever met anybody, known anybody that was addicted to heroin, oh my gosh. 
It's all, it, it, it takes a supernatural move. In rare cases, they get free. But it really almost takes a supernatural manifestation of God to get them off of it. It is, it is just so addictive. And it's making a comeback. Well, why? Because we're all, it's, okay, it's okay to smoke pot. It's okay to do designer drugs. You know, we've, got, we've got states now, and even the federal government is not going to enforce the federal laws against pot use. Well, there's nothing wrong with pot. It kills brain cells. They know ir- irreparable damage to young people's brain. They, never, they don't ever recover. I'll just smoke some weed, man, and just get dumb. It, it dumbs you down. I'm not trying to be I'm too funny, but I'm, it just dumbs you down. Well, what's happening? People are looking for altered states because their heart cries out for something more than they're coming in contact with in the natural. And the church has become so impotent and denies the reality of the supernatural power of God that everything's passed away that they don't have it there in the church. But Philip went down to Samaria and preached Christ. People were getting healed. People were getting delivered. Devils were getting cast out. I mean, the power of God was in demonstration. And they gave with heed, with one accord, to what he was preaching. It's time the church get back to being the supernatural church. See, because we're here. Come on, guys, follow my cue. We are here. That's right. They get saved and they get victory. victory. All right. And yeah, we're going to get to get going. That's a coming. What did he say? Jump the gun. <laughs> Listen what happened. Verse 7. Unclean spirits crying with a loud voice came out. Many that were possessed with them. See, we lock all of our, we, we lock all of our demon possessed people up in, in psychiatric wards and put them on drugs. And if they're not in the psychiatric ward, they're on some kind of drug, and they walk around life like, what's wrong with them? Well, they're, they're bipolar. You know what bipolar is? Devils! When you start talking to personalities, there's a devil in there. We don't believe in devils. You don't believe? No, we don't believe in devils. That's your problem. You know that you cannot go in and perform an exorcism in a psychiatric ward? They, won't, they, won't, they will not even let you send prayer cloths. Can't send them. They won't, they won't let them come in. Why? You'll, you'll, it'll make them worse. How worse can you be wrapped up like this in a padded cell? Looking like this. We can, you know, they need the devil cast out of them. Remember Carrie? The, the, the thing Carrie was based on? She was supposed to be schizophrenic. Demon-possessed. I don't believe in demon possession. You know, the mind can be sick. Let me tell you something. 98% of this stuff is demon possession. And they, here, here they had city people. You know, it's all kind of funny throughout the Bible. Peace, two people were getting devils cast out of them, and devils were coming out of them. One guy had 2,000. What's your name? We're a legion, for we're many. Le- a Roman legion had 2,000 men, men in it. Man, had 2,000 devils. I bet he was messed up. You got 2,000 devils, you messed up. One devil will mess you up, 2,000 will really mess you up. You ever, you ever, been, ever been around demonized people? Yeah, been around them. And they get a real original sometime. We, we had some guy in the church back in Greenwood one time. We were, Pastor John was casting the devil at him, and he, he went, what's your name? The guy goes, we're legion, for we're many. You're a liar. I've been in Mussolini, and I've been in Hitler. You know what I mean? <laughs> Got lying devils. You, you're just a devil wannabe. <laughs> Hallelujah. It's one of them new blue devils. That's right. Cap has been transformed. Cap was a Duke Krzyzewski fan until this morning. Because I told him this morning, see, Cap is ex-Navy. And I told him Krzyzewski used to be the coach at Army. That did it. <laughs> He's done. Fine, fin, finito. He can, he can. <laughs> Possessed with many, came, and the palsies, talked about palsies, and the lame were healed. And listen, what happened? When he showed up with the power of God, there was great joy in the city. I am telling you, a church full of faith in the Holy Ghost that is here to get so the people 
They're here that's so that people, they get saved and they get victory. That will bring joy to their lives. It'll bring joy to the city. How many of you meeting people right now that don't have a lot of joy? Oh, I mean, the finances are tough. What time is it right there? Oh, glory to God. It's not even 12 o'clock yet. It's three minutes to 12, but it ain't 12 o'clock. Hallelujah. I'm going to, mid I'm going to noon. Australian time. Glory to God. Hallelujah. See, joy comes when people encounter the true and the living God. And as our mission here at Faith in Victory Church, we are here so that people... Glory to God. And there was a certain man, Simon, who before time in the same city used sorcery and bewitched the people, giving out to himself with some great one, to whom they all gave heed from the least to the greatest, saying, This man is the great power of God. They were deceived. And to him they had regard, but that of long time he had bewitched them with sorceries. But when they believed Philip preached the things concerning the kingdom of God, the name of Jesus Christ, they were baptized, both men and women. Now what are they? If, you're, if you believe on God, the word of God, and you get baptized in Jesus, you are you're saved. And we're here, so people get, and then they get, then Simon himself believed. And when he was baptized, he continued with Philip and wondered, beholding the miracles and the signs which were done. This is verse 14. Now when the apostles which were at Jerusalem heard that Samaria had received the word of God. We know they received the word of God. We know they believe. They know they've been baptized in water. They sent unto them Peter and John, who when they were come down, prayed for them that they might receive the Holy Ghost. Now wait a second. You have people tell you all the time that you're going to get all the Holy Ghost you're ever going to get when you get saved. How could this be? How would the church at Jerusalem hear that they received the word of God, know they've been baptized in water, and then send down Peter and John to get them filled with the Holy Ghost if you got all the Holy Ghost you're ever going to get when you get saved? You can't, you can't reconcile that. The reason you can't reconcile it is because they're not the same. <coughs> For as yet he was fallen on none of them, only they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. They're saved. They're water baptized. They laid their hands on them, and they received the Holy Ghost. Amen. Folks, we need, listen, when people get saved, then we need to get them filled with the Holy Ghost. Mm -hmm. People need to be filled with the Spirit. They need to be able to pray in other tongues. He that speaketh in an unknown tongue, speaketh, uh, the, the, the Greek says, divine mysteries or secrets with God. We commune with the Father of Spirit, Spirit to Spirit. Your, your, your victory life is going to be based on, you know, he that prayeth in an unknown tongue, according to Jude, says he, he edifieth. He, the word edify comes from a Greek word that in modern English means to charge like you charge a battery. How many of you have ever had your battery go dead in your car? Yep. And what do you got to do? You got to get charged. You just got to get some more power to get back up so it works. You know? So you run out there and it's, you know, it's seven degrees and your son's car doesn't crank and you got to get out of your nice, warm, toasty bed. Run out, pull the van up in front of his car, get out, you know, with it running, hook up the jumper cables, and then he goes, nye, 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 brrr. you unhook the jumper cables, you unplug it. What happened? He needed to jump. He needed to be edified. He needed, his battery needed to be charged back up so it would work. See, our spirits need to be charged up. And if people are going to have victory, they're going to have to stay charged. It doesn't do you any good to have a car that won't start. Y'all here, you go home. My minivan sat in the driveway for six months. I couldn't afford to get the fix, and it was, uh, the, the PCM went out. When you hear those words, they're not pleasant words. Your ECM or your PCM is a computer. It's about a $1,000 repair. Mine was 1100 Glory. Make you shout. Like, what? Are you crazy? $1,000? But see, it wouldn't work. They said, well, the battery needs to be changed. Change the battery. Because they need to charge. See, that battery died sitting there. It just killed it. One thing, it wouldn't be in Jews. And the alternator, see, your, your, your alternator for your spirit is praying in tongues. See, you, en energy comes out of your battery, goes to the car, and then on your car, on a belt somewhere, there's a little thing, that, an alternator, it's running, and it sends juice back to charge the battery back up. It, it sends more back in than it's coming out to, to, to charge it back up. And see, praying in other tongues, people need victory. They need to get filled with the Holy Ghost. We need to equip people. So we're here to get people to do it. We need to get them filled with the Holy Ghost. Because they need, they need it. In this day and age, you need the Holy Ghost. Amen. 
Romans says he takes hold together with us against our infirmities because we don't know how to pray like we should. King James says the, you know, the Spirit himself helpeth us. Helpeth comes from a Greek word, three Greek words actually. It means takes hold together with against. He takes hold together with against our infirmities. We need the Holy Ghost. Can you say amen? And so our mission is we are here so people get it. Get it. And then you get them filled with the Holy Ghost. You know, uh, be drunk, drunk with wine, wearing his excess, but be filled with the Spirit. We need to get people filled with the Spirit. Uh, we need to get them full of faith. Amen? Amen. Or actually, full of the Word. James 1.21. Uh, receive with meekness the engrafted Word, which is able to save your soul. Amen? Romans 12.2. Amen? You know, um, be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you can prove what is that good and perfect and acceptable will of God. See, living in victory, filled with the Holy Ghost, filled with the Word, full of faith. Amen? Glory to God. The just shall live by faith. Hebrews 10.3. Amen? And in three other places. One, one over in um, Habakkuk, I believe it is. And then Galatians and another place. And, and, and it tells us, Romans 1.17, the just shall live by faith. Romans 1.17, Galatians 3.11, Hebrews 10.3. The just shall live by faith. We've got to get people full of faith. They come in here. Listen, this is why we're so strong about the Word. If people don't get it, they can't live it. You can give them a water down and make them feel good and tickle their ears, but in the hour of battle, they are not going to have what they need to win. They won't get it. You'll get defeated. And God did not call us, the church, anybody else, to get people to a place of defeat. He called us to bring them to a place of victory. Amen. That's our calling. That's our mission. That's your mission, church. It's not just Pastor Ed's. There's enough word in you right now. To, I mean, you could go someplace and preach to churches. They pastors don't even know what you got in you. They don't even know the things you know. You've been sitting in this church this long. You've got all kinds of good stuff in you. Full of faith. Full of the wisdom of God. And there's one, two million people out there looking for answers. Some of them don't know they're looking for answers. But they're looking for answers. Take your finger. Point at yourself. And say, I am an answer. Because I am here. So people get it. They get saved. And they get victory. Hallelujah. Praise God. We teach them, look at 2 Corinthians 5, 17. I've got, I've got to finish this. I cannot quit here. You're just going to have to hang with me. If you've got to go, lock the doors. Joe, did you hear me? He was asking me, how am I going to lock the doors? No lock on them. Lie to them. Tell them to lock on them. 2 Corinthians 5, 17 says, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. One translation says, A new species of being that never existed before. Old things are passed away, and all things are become new. And all things are of God. We've got to teach people who they are in Christ. Amen. Amen. We have to teach people who they are in Christ. You're a, you're a new creation. You're a believer. You're called of God. You're anointed of God. You're raised up and seated with him in heavenly places. Amen. People need to know who they are in Christ. And one of the greatest things you'll ever do as a, as a Christian is get Dad Hagen's little mini book, In Him, and go look up all the scriptures in the back. There's 150 In Him scriptures in the back of that little mini book. Now listen, you've got to look them up, but that's okay. It's all the, reference, all the work's done for you. You can find who you are in Christ, what you have in Christ, in Him and whom are you here. And then we, we need to develop, people need to develop a prayer and praise life. We need to be worshipers of God. We need to commune with God in prayer. Amen. I'll give you scripture references. Ephesians 6.18 and Hebrews 13.1. Amen. You know, Ephesians 6.18. E Praying always all prayer and supplication in the spirit. I believe that's what that was is. Yeah. Hallelujah. Sometimes you get going and if you don't have it written out, you forget. Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit, watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. Hallelujah. Third, if faith and victory is here so people get it, they get, get saved and they get, and once you get saved and get victory, what are you supposed to do? Get going. Come on, Janice. Preach, Janice. Bring it, Janice. Come on, sister. Hallelujah. Reaching people for Christ. Now, one of the greatest mistakes we've done in the charismatic word of faith circles is we have internalized all, all the things we get from God and made it about 
my victory, my blessing, my car, my house, my victory, my blessings, my this, my that. And we forgot the whole purpose of everything we were doing was to go get going. To go reach people. They are why we're here. Folks, no matter what you get in this life, it will not compare to what you get in heaven. And your calling is to go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Men and women need the gospel that you have. They need the Jesus you have. And, and we sold ourselves a lie in, in, our, in prosperity teaching. We really did. Well, if we got the right kind of car, they'll listen to us. We, live, we got the right kind of money. We, live, we have the right kind of status. I can't reach a rich man with my status. Now listen, Peter was a fisherman. He was not higher echelon of the society. And he was brought before the leaders and so forth, and they preached. It says they took note of them. They were ignorant and unlearned men, but they'd been with Jesus. Oh, yeah, they were ignorant and unlearned, but they had been with Jesus. There was something about them that made them different. There was something about them that, that could bring them before great people. And even they recognized that their presence of Jesus in their life had transformed them. Amen. We have got to get back to understanding. I'm not against using things as long as they are not what I, the, 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 the thing that, that I am depending on to get to people. I don't care about having, I mean, it's okay to have screens. It's all right to have lights. It's all right to have, you know, a different color. We're, we're, they, want, they want to change the kit. They're, they're, they're on me all the time. Dad, we need to change the backdrop on the, on the platform. Okay, okay, okay. We need to do something cool. We need to do something different. Okay, 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 okay. Now, we can do something cool and everybody go, oh, that's cool, but that's not going to win people. Right. And I'm not against doing something cool. Right. Right. <clears throat> As a matter of fact, we're going to do something. We're going to do something different. We're going to do something, okay, we're going to change it up. We are. And it's going to be cool. And they said, just turn me loose. And, you know, and I'm, I'm like, Ugh. every time he says, turn me loose, I go, Ehh. he said, turn me loose and stay out of there. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm like, Ehh. I fill out the coyote after one of those events. <laughs> you ever see the coyote after trying to get the road runner? You know, he's going to let you get the road runner, he lets you himself, and he's walking going, Nathan says, turn me loose, and I go, <laughs> what's that now? Oh, yeah, nobody, nobody gets it because it's too violent for our society. Oh. We have to reproduce and make disciples. Jesus said, go into all the world and preach the gospel. Amen. Matthew 16, 18. Look over there. You can read Mark 16 also. You, you got them. All right. Jesus asked them, who, who, who do men say that I am? They said, some say you're um, um, John the Baptist, Elisha, Jeremiah, one of the prophets. He said, who do you say that I am? Peter said, thou art the Christ, the son of the living God. Hallelujah. We've got to build his church. Jesus said, blessed art thou, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father which is in heaven. But I say unto thee, thou art Peter. Now, the Greek word for Peter here is petros. It means, a, it means a stone, pebble. And upon this rock, Petra, boulder. Now, see, we got the, one of the churches has built the whole thing on that Peter's the pope because Jesus said, you're the rock. No, no, no. Read the Greek. They know that. Peter was petros, small stone or pebble. Petra was a big boulder. Okay? It was bigger. I'll build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. What was it that Jesus was going to build his church on? Not Peter, on the revelation. Mm -hmm. right. That he's the Christ, the Son of God. It was the revelation. It's revelation knowledge that the church is built on, not a man. Right. Church is not built on Peter. It's not built on a direct line of uh, uh, claiming a direct line of ascendancy from Peter. 
It is built on the revelation that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God. Amen? We have to build the church. We have to preach what? See, Jesus, thou art the Christ. Thou art the anointed one. We're talking about an anointed Holy Ghost church. If we're going to build the kingdom, we've got to build it on the Holy Ghost church. Amen? We need to build this church on a Holy Ghost, as a Holy Ghost church. Listen, we're doing things. We're, we're, we're implementing things. We're making all kinds of changes. Our next, as, we, as, we, as we go through this year, we're going to keep adding to it. We're going to keep developing. We're going to get more trained. We're going to have better. You know, I just, dra- I just voluntold three or four people to become counselors. They didn't ask. I voluntold them. You are now a church counselor working with Miss Karen. <laughs> okay. Didn't know if I really wanted to do that or not. Doesn't matter. You're voluntold. I'm, I'm, I'm now called, I'm going to be called the voluntold pastor. Because I'm going to volunteer you a lot of stuff. Hallelujah. Amen. How, you know, is that original? No. Somebody I was in a meeting with Lester Summerall one time, and somebody said, Brother Summerall, we're having problems getting people to work in our nursery. How do you get people to work in your nursery? Easy. This week you're in there. Next week you're in there. The following week you're in there. That's how I handle it. And I dare, I would have dared anybody to tell him no. <laughs> Not Brother Summerall. Hallelujah. So, <clears throat> you know, th- things are changing. We're going to build the church. And we're going to build it in the supernatural. We're going to set other things in place. And we're, we're, there's a lot of stuff we're working on. There's so many things we're working on. A lot of things have to be established and reestablished and redone and, and fixed and, and all that kind of stuff. But the bottom line is we're going to build the church. That's part why. Because we are here. So people get saved, so that people get victory, and then they get going. That's building the church. We've got to build the church. Can you say amen? We've got to reach people for Jesus. We've got to make disciples and reproduce. We've got to build the church. We have to find and fulfill his purpose. Now, let me say this. We've got a lot of people looking for their individual purpose without first following the mandate to fulfill his corporate purpose purpose let me get up higher so maybe it carries more authority we've got a lot of people spending a lot of time looking for their individual purpose without first fulfilling the mandate of the corporate purpose the church is to come together. I'm going to tell you, a lot of people will find their individual purpose as they're working towards fulfilling the corporate purpose. You'll find your place in, in that process. There's a lot of people, I ain't doing well, I don't know what my purpose is, so they sit around and do nothing. It's time for you to stop doing nothing. We've already got a command from the church. The head of the church has told us to go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. We've got to be busy about building his kingdom. We've got to be built busy about building this church so we can do what we're called to do. You have a mission. Well, I don't really know what my purpose is. Put your hand to the corporate purpose and let God direct you. It's hard to steer a parked car. You can get in there and turn the wheel back and forth all day, and all you'll do is run the rubber off of one little spot. And then when you do start driving, it's going to go bump, 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 bump. Hello? When there's already things to do. Let's start following Jesus. Let's start reaching people. Let's build the church. Find your fulfillment in serving God. Instead of having a special whatever about you. And then as, as you're faithful in those things and God begins to move you, you'll find yourself in your purpose and may not even realize how you got there. Hello? God's purpose started out as corporately. Read your Bible. Go in all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. There was a corporate mission together. In that uh, specific things are birthed. But let's find it as a corporate purpose. This church has a mission. This church needs you. We need your faith, we need your love, we need your, your energy, we need your, your service so that this corporate body can fulfill God's plan. Amen. I said amen. 
There are, there are reasons. There are, there are callings. There's reasons why you, may not have, you haven't found your purpose yet in your thinking, in your thinking. And I believe you, you, you're trying to identify the wrong thing at the wrong time. Hello? You'll never become a sergeant if you can't first follow orders as a private. It just doesn't happen. You can't advance the ranks of the military without proving yourself at each level. And the first thing you learn to do in the military is become about the whole rather than the individual. Now, I ain't talking some kind of gooby to God, Marxism and all that stuff. We're talking about the body of Christ. We're not talking about, you know, society all producing it. Forget all that stupid stuff. Utopia doesn't exist except in heaven. And then it's got, it's got ranks. There's rulers in heaven. They rule over cities. They're going to rule over cities. They're going to sit by the, hand, throne, by, by the right hand of Jesus. There's different levels in heaven. There was different levels on Jesus' ministry team. You had the 70 disciples, you had the 12, you had the 3, and you had the 1. Hello? They were all different levels of, of ministry. So let's, let's, let's find our purpose in God. And here's one, the first thing you do. Go to Colossians chapter 3. I know I'm, 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 run, I'm running longer. Do you all mind? But I'm calling you. I am calling you as the pastor. By the Holy Ghost, let's step out, step up, and step in. Amen? Let's get busy about the things of God. Well, I haven't been busy in a long time. Shake off the dust. Yeah. Amen? <clears throat> how, many, how many have done things like hadn't gone running in a long time, then you, you start out and your lungs hurt? Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, God. But then there's a place you hit after running for a little while that you kind of work out some of that clogged up garbage in there. And then it starts feeling good. Blood's flowing. Air's getting in. God, wow. That feels good. Ow, I feel good. Da, da, da. All right. Amen. <laughs> We're gonna, you're going to shake off your spiritual dust. You're going to get some wind back in your spiritual lungs. And we're going to run together. <coughs> Amen? Let me see. We have a choice. We can, have it. We, can, we can fold it in and quit, or we can go forward. And we, we got to go forward. We got to do it together. Amen? Hallelujah. And so he says here in Colossians chapter 3, if you be risen with Christ. How many are risen with Christ? I mean, how many saved? Yeah. Amen. Janice, are you saved? <laughs> Raise your hand. On, All right. S listen. Seek those things which are above, where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God. Set your affection on things above and on, not on things on the earth, for you are dead and your life is hid in, with Christ in God. Here I am. That's why I, I, I base this on, that, on this verse. Many people are looking for the fulfillment of their purpose when God said, set your affections on heaven. Count yourself dead. It is the corporate purpose that is of premium and primary importance. And you will find your fulfillment in serving in the corporate purpose of the kingdom of God. Amen. Too many people want to be seen. Too many people want to be at the forefront. Too many people just want to know what I'm supposed to do. If you can't be trusted to do what you've already been told to do in a corporate manner, how can you be trusted to do the individual? That's good, preacher. Go ahead on. I think I will. <laughs> Amen. Glory to God. We're going to find our purpose in God. Amen. And we're going to find it starting in the corporate purpose of Setting our affections on things above. Folks, too many people in our midst, too many people in the body of Christ as a whole, have gotten their affections off the things of heaven and got it on what about me? And the reason you're not getting the answers is God wants you to get your mind off of you and get it on him. He wants you to get your affections off of you and get it on him. And you're afraid if you do that you won't see an answer to the what about me questions you have. When in reality, when you get them on him, he will absolve you of those, of, of those issues. 
is you find your joy in Him and in serving Him and being in fellowship with Him. Turn your eyes upon Jesus. Look full in His wonderful face and the things of earth will grow strangely dim in the light of His glory and grace. I know I'm not a great singer. Can't stay on key and can't even keep the tune right. But the bottom line is this. You get your eyes on Jesus and get your heart on Jesus and set your affectional things above. And it, you'll get to a place where your purpose individually ain't nearly as not ain't. Boy, I'll tell you, that southern comes out every once in a while, don't it? And some of you think, it comes out all the time. Shut up. I still have to say you can. I mean, I'll be out there in front of the wedding. Does any, anybody got just cause for this man? Yeah, I do. <laughs> be nice to the pastor. <laughs> Ushers, take him out. I got objections to this. I'm messing. Kind of. My brother will have the truck, the tarp, the shovel sitting on the side just in case. Because you're dead and your life is hid with Christ and God. We, there you go. It's a word for you, brother. <laughs> yeah, but when you get to meddling, you get in trouble, don't you? All right. See, when you stop meddling in my sermons. When you set your affectional things above, you're, you're investing in eternity. Stop. Now, don't, don't take this one. Don't, Pastor said we should invest in eternity. Not, I'm not saying don't make money investments. And, you know, for, that's, that's not what I'm saying. Yeah. I'm saying the heart of man has to be to invest in eternity. It's not all about you. It's not all about you feeling good. And the reason a lot of you aren't feeling good, or people, and I'm talking internet, is because you've been take, thinking about you and not about the kingdom. It's not a rebuke. It's a challenge to come out of that place into the place where you're going to find fulfillment and joy and serving God and doing God's will and doing God's purpose. Can somebody say amen? amen. Hallelujah. And what's the end result of this? So the FEC mission, say it. What do they get? And what happens? The result is this, an overflowing life. Jesus said in John 10, 10, he said, the thief comes not but for to kill, to steal, and destroy. I have come that they might have zoe, life, spiritual, supernatural, God life, and have it to the full, or have it more abundantly. When we are getting people saved, and we're getting them victory, and we get going, and we're, we're going, and they get going, we will begin to find joy. Let me, let me get, well, I don't believe that. How many remember Jesus at the well with the Samaritan woman? Remember that? <clears throat> the disciples had gone to town to get food because Jesus was hungry. He was tired and he was hungry. He sat down at the well, and a Samaritan woman showed up, and he said, give me to drink. And he said, why are you talking to me? The Jews don't talk to us because we're half-breeds. I'm, I'm, I'm paraphrasing a little bit. This, this is what it was. They were half-caste, half-breeds. They were half-Jew and half-something else. You know, so they, the Jews didn't even talk to him. He said, if you knew who it was asking you, you'd ask me for water, and I would give it to you, and you wouldn't thirst again. And she said, where in the world are you going to get water while I'll never thirst again? Amen. And she, he start, he's talking with her, and he says, now go call your husband. And, uh, and she said, well, I don't have a husband. He said, you're right. You don't have one. You've had five, and the one you're shacking up with ain't your husband. That's, that's taking all the, the King Jimmy off of it. The one that thou livest with now is not thy husband. That's the guy you shacking up with ain't your husband. Okay? And she said, well said. And then she goes to tell everybody, come find the man who told me everything I need to know. And when the disciples get there, see him talking to her, and they, come, they got the food and the, and the water and, all, and, and the beverages and all that kind of stuff. And he said, and they said, you know, here's the food and stuff. He said, I'm not hungry. He said, I have food you know not of. What was his food? It's fulfilling the will of God. 
And this is all paraphrased. You go read it a little more, you know, get more specific when reading it. But he found satisfaction in doing what God said do. More so than even eating his natural food. Thy word is even more necessary than my daily food or my daily bread. Amen. Our joy, the abundant living, glory to God. Are you here? The peace. Look at um, uh, Romans 15, 13. Last scripture we're turning to. How many give me another 10 minutes? 10, 20, 30. I got 30. I got 40. I got, I got, praise God. I got another hour. Glory to God. Thank y'all. Some people, I know sometimes people turn around and think, God, just put the arms down. You want to say break them, but you can't do that in good conscience. Romans 15, 13. Now the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace and believing that you may abound in hope through the power of the Holy Ghost. I'm telling you, God wants you to have an overflowing life with abundant joy, peace, hope, and eternal fruit. I would that you bear much fruit. All right, Jesse, somebody, go, go. everybody gets one. Here's your tag. I, this, listen, I'm not giving this to you so you can go stick it in your Bible and throw it away. I, don't you put it somewhere you see it all the time. Not this side. <laughs> that side. All right, this is the side that says, FEC mission. We are here so people get it. Now, that's easier. And, uh, they get saved, they get victory, they get going, and they have a life of overflowing joy, peace, and eternal fruit. That's a whole lot easier than saying family church, charismatic teaching center, establishing churches. That, you know, it, yeah. uh, that's all in here. Yeah. Yeah. This is just easier to, to, to grasp a hold of. It's easier for you to articulate. What are y'all, what's, what's your church all about? We're there so people get it. What do you mean get it? They get saved, they get victory, and they get, they, they get going. And it results in, in joy and peace and hope and eternal fruit. That's what we're all about. Isn't that simple? How many find that simple? Good. Anybody else find it simple? Yeah. Me too. Can I get more than three hands on it being simple? <laughs> All right. Because we can go back to the other one. You know? All right. Get up. Get up. Get up. Cap helper. Everybody gets one. All right. Hallelujah. Everybody gets one. We're here. This is why we're here. This is what we're about, folks. And I'm, I'm calling you to a renewed vision. I'm tired and wore out. I command that weariness to come off of you in Jesus' name. I speak life over your body and over your mind and are refreshing by the Holy Ghost. Amen. To be stirred up in your spirit and your mind. Amen. Put, you need to put off that old weary thing in Jesus' name. Can somebody say amen to that? Amen. So. Hallelujah. Then y'all run next door and give them to all the kids, teachers over there. Give them to the audio room workers. Go by the nursery. Everybody gets them. All right? Now, parents, it's up to you not to have paper airplanes made out of this. You may think about it, but don't you do it.